welcome to this episode of my photographic notes for December 2021. So I will talk about my f selection of photos for that month and either that I took or edited. Uh, and yeah, let's start. So the first two photos taken with a Canon EOS 6D and a Sigma Tele 400mm f5.6 lens from the mid-90s. So I do like that combination. Uh, both of those are quite old cameras today. Uh, they're the 6D, it's a Mac 1. Um, combined to this lens, secondhand today is a really cheap setup, but cheap only in price. I think the, the rendering is good. Uh, even the low lights, uh, it's an old sensor, a CMOS sensor, but you, you, the noise you get when you push the, the, the raw files is interesting is not ugly per se and yeah for it's nice to use those old cameras they were really good at the time um why would they be worse today it's just that they're older if they work they you can still do some interesting stuff with it and yeah next photos uh, on the left it's uh, an instant photo it's actually fujifilm instax wide uh, film, which I it's a photo I took with a large chamber camera made by uh, Intrepid. Uh, it's a four by five camera. It's not huge, but it's uh, and it has a, uh, a Lomograph flock back for the instant film, which is made by Lomography. It's a great uh, add-on for those four by five chamber cameras because you it do, it doesn't cover the whole surface uh, of exposition that you would have with um, 4x5 film but you can actually use your camera those uh, if you go to see on for those who don't know what those chambers are you can manipulate the position of the lenses uh, the angles the planes and uh, do lots of stuff uh, uh, to pin pinpoint the, the what you want to do with the with the, the camera um, and yeah that was done with a pinhole lens, 140mm f280, not, a, not f2.8, f280, 280. It's actually the first picture I took was the setup. I didn't really know how it worked. I wanted to see how it went, so I kind of extrapolated the right uh, exposition. I don't know how many minutes I, I, it took me to take this picture, and I just took whatever I had on hand just to see how it worked. Um, and yeah, different feel, uh, interesting grain. And that's a setup I will definitely use more in the future. So uh, a shout out to Lomography for continuing to make some great stuff, really creative equipment. Um, and for Intrepid, for making, they're, if you're interested in going into large chamber cameras, they make the probably the best uh, price to quality ratio in, in, in that field. So, yeah, uh, I'll talk about that probably in the next months or, or maybe later in this series. Uh, on the right, that's a picture that seems quite uh, messy. Um, and that's because I tried to make it look s as such. So uh, what you see here is a photo I took with a Leica R8 camera, which is a reflex, uh, analog reflex 35 millimeter camera. Leica made in in the early 2000, if, I, uh, if I'm correct, and on which you could add a digital back. Uh, so basically, it's it's not a unicorn. The camera exists, which works either with film or digitally, uh, and Leica made it at the time. And it's quite bulky. Um, the sensor at, was a 10 megapixel CCD Kodak sensor with a range of 100 to 1600 ISO. Um, but yeah, it worked. You could switch uh, back to film whenever you wanted, uh, keeping the same camera. Great equipment. I, I really like it. But in that case, I've used it with um, Leica Telit 400mm f6.8 uh, tele lens. And I tried to give some kind of feel and, and kind of bring the dust and the small particle elements uh um, that were dirtying my lens. Uh, I wanted to 
gets them out and shows the, aber- the chromatic aberrations of the lenses, though, yeah, and the grain of the of the sensor. So, uh, I, I like doing that kind of pictures. It doesn't really reflect uh, the really nice quality of the equipment used to do it. Uh, the next two photos. On the left, uh, we're going to film. That's uh, Kono Monolith 64 film uh, using a Canon MC with its flash. Uh, that was in Prague. Um, I've talked about the Canon MC last month. It's a really compact uh, film camera from 1984. So basically the years of Apple Macintosh was invented. And it's actually got that industrial look from the times. It's really robust. It, it's main... Why I use it mostly, it's autofocus, auto exposition, which is not per se a quality, but it's really usable only with one hand. You get the camera out of your pocket because it's really compact. You slide using the same hand that holds the camera. You slide the lens open and you flash while you take the picture. And the flash is a separate model with its separate AA batteries. So I I really like that that camera and, and the focus is usually pretty good. So not today quality focus but for the time great camera uh lots of character and and the film the kono model at 64 is interesting um to me uh and that was in prague uh street photography um yeah when i walk around i experiment things um on the right we're going back to this uh chamber the four by five wide uh large format camera with the lomograph flock uh Fuji Film Instax wide adapter. Still using the pinhole, um, trying to get to know this equipment a little bit better, and I kind of experimented with lights. So it's a self portrait. That's what I had on hand, and I it's a fifteen minute exposure, um, and I used lights, and I was basically standing on front of the camera. I'm wearing a hat and sunglasses, and yeah, you get weird stuff when you try to experiment with equipment and I actually do like that picture I think it's uh, it's really weird but um, it was definitely fun to make uh, took me 15 minutes staying on front of the lens but yeah I moved lights around and yeah it's a bit the setup is quite complex but uh, I might go I might do another video on my light setups uh, uh, in the future the next two photos going still in film. Um, that's uh, two photos taken using Eterna 500T Fuji film, which is a, a movie film uh, that was put into 35 millimeter uh, photo cartridges by um, a company named Cinegrel in Switzerland. So it's basically. Uh, putting movie film into a canister that lets you take photos with a normal 35 millimeter camera. They develop the film, this uh, company, many others do it because it's ECN2 uh, development process. You can do it yourself also if you are if you have the equipment and the knowledge. And that's with a Leica M6 uh, camera. Um, I really like the rendering of those uh, movie films. Uh, same thing for Vision 3 or Vision 2, even uh, if you have old stocks of Vision 2. Um, it's a bit different than the film we find for common photography. And yeah, works pretty well. On, on I'm not sure what lens I used here. Probably a 50mm Summicron F2.0 um, lens. That's one of the lenses I use most. So, yeah. Next, again, film. So this month is a lot of film. Um, here, for those who followed my uh, previous videos or my work, I like working with this old defunct format, film format, which is APS. And that's uh, APS film. For, I'm not sure what camera I use. I've got quite a few of those APS cameras I've put film in. And I've got a, a lot of old APS stock film that's expired since the early 2000s or even in the last century. And I just plug them in because they're film cartridges and just take whatever camera comes uh, on my in my hand and travel with them because they're really compact. So uh, it's maybe a... 
I think it's a Pentax Athena um, APS camera. And I'm not sure what expired film I used, but yeah, that's the kind of rendering you get uh, with those old films. Um, actually, it's the equipment does a good part of the pictures you take in that style of photography. And yeah, I like I like doing that. Next two photos. Um, that's digital photography, a Leica M240 rangefinder using a Summicron 40mm f2.0 lens. Um, that was a photo they took during a, an external barbecue at the Embassy of Foreign Artists in Geneva. Um, it's an old house in the middle of a new neighborhood that's being completely rebuilt. Uh, it's going to really be a, a big change in the city. But there's this small old house from probably the 19th century with a big garden that used to be um, head of a government uh, arts-linked uh, agency, and now it's the Embassy of Foreign Artists, where there's uh, foreign artists that have residencies, and then that was the barbecue of one of this group. Uh, interesting technical fact here. I, I do like the rendering again of those Leica um, M240 cameras. Um, but they have a, it's an old camera and it's got a pretty limited uh, dynamic range. Um, so to get the details of the flames, I actually did a multi-exposure. I took one picture of the scene and then I took a, um, a second photo, uh, underexposed photo, to get a bit more details of the fire. So it's, and then add them up uh, in post-processing just to get more texture of the flames. Otherwise they would have been completely white. So that's a small trick uh, I sometimes use. I, I don't modify. I don't. I don't usually modify my my photos, but uh, for small things like that, where where is there a meaning to it? I don't distort the scene. It's just giving more detail. I will do it. Here, are the two next photos going to a more modern camera. That's a Leica SL2 uh, camera, uh, way wider. Uh, uh, dynamic range uh, and that I'm not sure what lens I've put on it here uh, probably a, a, an adapted Leica M format lens so yeah when I when I walk around that's uh, that's a Luna Park uh, in Geneva there's a big place a big square in Geneva where you got the circus and so that's where I was just going around and took some pictures I was actually going to get some food but I had the camera with me, so I thought, why not take a few back stage pictures of the scenes? Um, same thing here, the two photos, same setup. It's always interesting when you walk around, if you want to take pictures, just experiment and discover things, to just not only focus on the, the front side of things, go behind, try to find something that makes sense or or that you like, and try to take a picture. Um, the next two photos, um, still digital. On the left, that's uh, using a Nikon DF camera and a really old zoom lens, which I do like. It's a 36 to 72 millimeter Nikkor f3.5 from the E-Series uh, lenses. They're super cheap secondhand. They they're not very, people don't like them usually, but I find their color rendering to be pretty good. They're quite soft, but they work great. And 36 to 72 is, is a nice range. The, the, the construction of those Series E lenses was supposed to be a little bit less than some other series from Nikon, but yeah, they're very solid, very robust. Uh, uh, that's what you get with this Nikon DF, which is a pretty old digital camera too, but uh, with a good uh, low light sensitivity already. Um, yeah, and on the right, usual equipment for me, Leica M240, and no idea what kind of lens I used here. Um, yeah, we see the grain, the typical grain of those Leica cameras, because I had to push a little bit of low lights. Uh, next to photos. Now we're going to CCD, 
Leica M8, uh, this non-full-frame uh, digital camera from Leica, and using a Voigtlander Nocton 35mm f1.4 version 2 of the lens. Uh, that's the left photo, so that's in a cemetery, trying to get this weird, uh, weird ambiance uh, and feel. And there was some a small mist, uh, yeah. Even so, the lens is really light, uh, really bright. Um, yeah, the sensor is still pushed to its limits in, in the low light environments, low light environments, and you definitely see the grain, this uh, CCD grain from the M8. On the right, same camera, Leica M8, with a good light, with good lighting conditions. Um, taking a picture of a, a typewriter I'm working with right now for some projects or creative projects. Uh, an old IBM Selectric uh, Bowl uh, typewriter. Uh, and that's using the super angle and 21mm f4 lens, which I've talked about extensively, I believe, in the previous episodes. Uh, now going to computational photography, second part of those presentations. I do my own apps, just to remind those who don't know. Um, I do my apps, my photo apps, in order for them to respond the way I want to get the results I want. So they're experimental apps. In those three photos, it's the Camare app, Camare Creative Camera app, that um, I used with multi-exposition on the left. Uh, there's a creative filter, which is ArchDR, um, and probably a film simulation over this. Uh, the middle photo is... Uh, this creative filter, which I name uh, insaturators, because they're in my software, those are applied on the signal at the, directly after the sensor, and that's that's this, the name of the filter is DNAZ, and then there's a film, there's a film simulation uh, over at the end of the process um, in low lights environment. Uh, DNAZ tends to flatten the dynamic curves. And the last one, the one on the far right, that's a weird creative filter uh, I created, which is named Regert. Um, the insaturator kind of creates weird patterns, um, which do look analog. I tried to make them look analog, and they're going to kind of mess up the color table, but still keep the overall color quality and yeah that's the kind of thing you get when you use that filter you know, those patterns kind of like they were printed with uh with some thick ink ink and over that you have a film uh simulation um here again this my apps are can create lots of things including the borders and you know the the final print medium uh, simulate the uh, final print medium, but one of the most interesting thing in in my uh, in my photographic activity, I like using all the lenses on on a device like an iPhone or, and for example here I have that's an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and with the app I can take the three the image from the three lenses at the same almost the same time in a in a compact uh, in a short sequenced. Um, sequence um, and have them on one picture and that's uh, a photo I took with the camera app uh, using the RDR insaturator um, a film simulation over that and uh, a, a print medium which is uh, named Polar 6 which kind of looks like Polaroid uh, um, film the next three photos always with camera ray app the camera ray app so picture far left is probably rdr and a film simulation the middle one it's probably dna z and some film simulation what i find interesting is middle photo is those small lenses on the, on phones uh, they can be really great like on the iphone 12 pro max they're a really incredible lenses. Technologically, it's fantastic. It's still not the same uh, lens composition than a bigger lens. It's a, it's not the same nature. So the flare is interesting. It gives you a good idea of the 65 millimeter um, 
lens flare when you saturate the composition of that uh, specific lens on the iPhone. Um, and the right, the far right uh, picture, that's HDR as an insaturator and a, some kind of film simulation over it. Uh, I don't really note what kind of film simulation I use uh, usually. The next three are again Camare multi exposition on the left using an insaturator I name Arguable, which um, kind of simulates uh, those old analog video signals where the three um, base color uh, channels were slightly out of uh, sync. Uh, and uh, probably three expositions on the far right, a uh, far left picture. In the middle is probably DNA Z uh, as an insaturator with a film simulation. And on the right, um, I don't really know which insaturator I used, probably because it's really low light, probably DNA Z or RDR. And then I used uh, uh, the Polar Laurel film simulation or filmulator, uh, which is a simulation of a color thermal printer that's used, for example, in instant cameras, some instant cameras, uh, low-priced instant cameras. Um, next photos. Again, multi-exposition on the left. Using the Camari app, there's a whole module in the app which lets you um, do multi-exposition in real time, kind of real time. Um, middle photo, same thing, multi-exposition. Different angles of the same place. Uh, obviously here, Again, this simulation of a thermal color thermal printer. And on the right, multi-exposition um, yeah, of a river and uh, the insides of a small shop. Next pictures, lots of multi-expositions. Um, most of my apps, I, I tend to use them extensively, not only to make to create uh, photographs I'm interested in, but also to test the app, test the algorithms I code and uh, and the tools I create. So here I was definitely working on the multi-exposition side of things. And yeah, three examples of what you can do. Interestingly, in the middle photo, uh, we have, it was the same night uh, than the photos I took with the Lake ISL2 uh, camera that I showed before. It shows you what kind of rendering you definitely get with a phone and how different it can be. Uh, it's definitely not the same photographic matter you're working with. Um, no matter how good the cameras on your smartphone are. Um, and on the right, uh, multi-exposition. Again. Um, here... On the left, that's a multi-exposition. Um, interesting fact about this one, one of the photos before I did the same, I used some part, some one of the exposition for another photo. Um, and that's how the this multi-exposition tool is on that uh, app, uh, that photographic app, Camare. Um, the two other pictures are taken with another app uh, I'm developing, which is named Digital Pola. It's not yet out um, there's a few it's a new engine a new image rendering engine based on the same algorithms i've developed for camare but it's it's really i'm really building it for camare is pretty slow uh, the, the user experience is kind of like with an old film camera um, the digital paula is really fast i'm really uh, fine-tuning the codes for it to render really fast for it to take the photo really fast, really reacts to your slightest touch. And yeah, the, the rendering is slightly different, but two examples. Um, and three more, again, with the, this digital Paula app. Um, right now it's got a random uh, settings mode and that's me testing this random settings mode. And on the film you have indications of what insaturators, uh, those creative filters, what it, what they are, and what kind of uh, film simulation overlay or sensor simulation overlay there is. Um, 
still. Um, now it's going back to Camare, this app. Uh, the Camare app to me is the most uh, fine tunable as a user, not as a coder uh, app. I can define the, the image ratio, size. I can combine the different lenses at once, do some dual photography where I take a picture from one side of the, of the phone and the other side of the phone at the same time. Um, which is actually the, the right photo, the right two photos are only one photo and it's taken on both sides of my smartphone at once. Uh, and there was a software bug when I was testing it and it inverted uh, uh, one of the photos while taking it. And there's uh, on the left, there's uh, an insaturator which I named Square with a film simulation overlay after. That's in the random mode, so the rendering is kind of weird. Those blocks are, there's a specific way they're built, and that's pretty random. Uh, and on the right, it's the same Regert insaturator that's, uh, that was used uh, in that example. The next three photos, and they will be the last uh, for this presentation, um, again using Digital Paula on the left, uh, what kind of rendering this new engine gives. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll get it out soon. Um, and in the middle, that's Kamare with the RDR insaturator uh, and probably, not even sure, yeah, probably a small Kodak film simulation over that. Well, Kodak, Kodak looking film simulation uh, as an overlay. And the last one on the right, that's actually the we're having worked on Digital Paula, I have another app which is named Dark Cam, which lets you take pictures in low-light environments without disturbing your environment because it, the user interface is, is fine-tuned for low-light environment. And I've added a, a random preset uh, using all the algorithms of Camare and integrated it in, in one of the modes of Dark Cam. So that's what came out of it. And yeah, hopefully you found this... Um, this week's presentation enjoyable, uh, entertaining, and if you have questions or comments, please post them below. And see you next time. Mm -hmm.